Josh Groban initially had dreams of being a Broadway star until a distracting recording career, which took him to the top of the charts, got in the way. This season, the charming crooner finally made that dream come true by headlining the acclaimed smash Natasha, Pierre, and the Great Comet of 1812. On this week's show, People, Groban tells all about getting groped on stage. You know, someone will tell me afterwards, like, oh, that lady really got a handful. I'm like, Really? Because <laughs> it is. I mean, my padded butt is is quite voluptuous. Dating with a beard and why he wants to be just like Oprah. Josh, thank you for coming by. Thanks for having me. And this I rainy, love it. rainy day out there. It is a rainy uh, day. People can't tell that from watching. They this, can't. Well, they can't. Of course, no. There's no windows here. But uh, but you still look dashing. Yeah, uh, <laughs> thank you. As do you, man. You, you, uh, you, are coordinated with the blue? I try. I try. You look good too. I like gray, this like my soul today. <laughs> oh my God! How's life? This Broadway thing happened. It happened. You're still doing it. Yes, it's still happening. We're still going. It's like the the show is like heating up. It's a big Broadway smash. Like you it's didn't know it was gonna be a big Broadway, Broadway great, smash. It's been doing great. We are so thrilled that a that a show this out out of the box has connected with such a great audience, and that we get to kind of share our our, our nutty circus with people every night and. It's a show that I've loved since I saw it off Broadway in the uh -huh. tent. I still have the old tweet of my picture with the the cast, which many of them are now are still in the oh, show. Oh wow, cool! But little did I know I would be there. Peter, everyone uh, involved went wait, wait, four wait, years wait. Later. Josh Groban likes it. Josh Groban likes it. Well, wait, it was, let's keep this in mind. <laughs> well, no, I kept it in mind more than they did. I just um, and I didn't even really keep it in mind. It was just always an experience that I remembered was unlike anything I'd ever experienced in yeah. theater, uh, both musically and with its environment. And so, you know, I was reading probably Broadway.com, and I was reading a blurb about the fact that they were kind of toying with the, I with the idea of bringing it to a proscenium and, and yeah. reinventing a theater. I'd gotten other offers, but they were always for like a three-month run and something that's been around for 20 years. And um, I thought this is something that, that would be really fascinating. And so I just, I threw my name in the ring and went out and had drinks with Dave Malloy, our composer, uh -huh. and Rachel Chavkin, our brilliant director. And we just talked about Pierre and talked about the show and what we loved about it and what our dreams were for it. And it turned out we all had some pretty similar ideas. Mm -hmm. And so um, it happened pretty naturally. And Dave played the role. He did. When I first saw it, I saw Originally, it Originally, he originated it, yeah. Yeah, yeah the meatpacking yeah. district. Then, um, and then he, he eventually left while it was still in the right. meatpacking uh, district. And then David Abelis, uh, right. who I saw, who was great, uh, went in for him. Well, people have been dreaming, you've been dreaming about doing Broadway, but also the fans and the Broadway community have been dreaming about you coming here. I've been so honored that it has been a mutual dream. Like, I, <laughs> I have felt such a warmth and a welcoming from the Broadway community, even before I was on Broadway. Yeah. Just the friends that I made within the community um, and the support and the want that seemed to be there has always been really, really uh, very, very, very wonderful. So I, I'm going to embarrass you just a little bit. So we do we have a thing called Culturalist okay. Challenge. Yeah, yeah. And oh, we, yeah, I've seen those. And guys. we asked people, we, we all want him to come to Broadway, obviously. <laughs> what should he come in? And I don't know if you saw this, but these are the Thank these you. are the top uh, choices I just want to okay, share with sure, you. sure, sure. There's this. Oh, yes. Oh, this sure. Is? Oh, yeah, straight into the woods. Yes, the baker. Yeah, yes, yeah. That, that number 10. This is a tricky one. This that, is that looks like my exact costume from Crazy Stupid Love, the movie I did with. That's the, exactly. That's what it yeah, is. No, yeah. it's actually Sound of Music. Oh, that's Sound of Music. Ca sure, yes. Captain yes. Montreal. Yeah, I know that. That's a good role. <laughs> this is this one. Yeah, of course. I would love to see this. One day. One one, day. Okay, one yeah. day. One day. Sunday with George. That'd be George. Uh, maybe a little uh, Billy oh. Bigelow with Laura. Oh, 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 of course. Yeah, yes, Billy, yes, that's yes. Billy Bigelow. Yeah, oh. that's Stephen Pasquale's body in your head. Yes, of course. Well, look. Apparently, the fans want to see me in a vest. That I can accomplish. Whatever the show, yeah. <laughs> this was Finding Neverland, yes, <laughs> Great, Jam cool. Barry, yeah, yes. Sure. This is good. <laughs> yes, Javert. With the glasses. Yeah, I do, a, I mean, I do you, a mean stars. You definitely, you. you definitely have to do it with yeah, glasses. And I've always wanted to do a stage dive. Uh, I've always wanted <laughs> uh, yeah, to that, fall. That's on the list? So, yeah, absolutely. You couldn't yeah, work that into yeah. the show. <laughs> little Joseph. Oh, yeah. i got to grow the, grow the locks out a little bit. Yeah. This is you did this. It's chess. Yeah, that's Judy oh, Q. This is the chess. original chess. Yes, that's, that's the original David. Chess, yeah. Oh, the great David Carroll. Uh, oh my God. An idol just and you singing great, anthem was like great, amazing. Uh, that, that was a well. while ago. Now that was like. Well, I was, just, I was just talking with Seth Rudesky a little earlier today, and um, we were talking about we did this thing for the Actors Fund, you know, in like 2004. Yeah, we yeah, did, yeah, I was there. First, that was my my first love affair with chess. I hadn't known it really before that. Right. And then uh, we just did it again. Uh, at Royal Albert Hall. Yeah, in like London, four yeah. Years ago. But, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. And then this is your Valjean. Oh, and then, of course, changing roles. Yeah. Maybe within the same production yeah, yeah, yeah. of Limiz. Yeah, that's a good uh, one. And Phantom, then this is sure. sort of like the one everyone. Yeah, that's, I made that mask in like second grade. I made that cl that mask in high school Did art you? class. Amazing. And I brought it to Phantom and asked Android Weber to sign Hilar it. Hilarious. Like, I've, been a fan, I've been a Phantom freak. Yeah, uh, with the like PH. Since I was, since I was a kid. P-H-R-E-A-K. Since I was a kid. I just, I've always had such a soft spot for 
that music. And but that look character. how good you look. It's not bad. Yeah. I mean, so would yeah. you ever do I would this? Have to actually, they slick your hair back for that. You know, this that's is the, kind of, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I would love know. to. Step they'll in do the it fan. however you want to do it. I think they'll I do would, it. You can do it with the beard if you want. I would. <laughs> <laughs> I think they'll just whatever you want to do. Add the scar over the beard. Yeah, know. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sure, sure. It'll be Which, lumberjack, lumberjack phantom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what do you think it's when you see people like? Well, first of all, they're very crafty. The Photoshop skills are. Oh yeah. Okay. Excellent. Okay, that's Caitlin. Yeah. And and it's it's just so gratifying to see that they're. Um, their excitement matches my excitement. Yeah. I, I look at those and I just like, my head swirls with possibilities of things I would love to do one yeah. day. And the nice thing about all those roles, for the most part, is that they don't require dancing. So I, <laughs> I really appreciate that because uh, I'm a double threat. Uh, I can move dramatically. P uh, Pierre uh, has some drunken dance scenes, yes. which I can do because he's supposed to be doing it terribly, which I was yeah. able to accomplish. But no, this is, I've got the bug. I mean, I've had the bug since I was a kid, but you know, if the fork in the road when I was a, a freshman in, in musical theater school at right. Carnegie Mellon mm -hmm. was to branch out on my own and make right. albums and, and not play a character but be myself. And right. that was an incredible and enticing opportunity that was too good to pass up and it's right. been an incredible journey and I will continue to do that after this show is my run is done. But to finally find myself in a place that has felt like such an amazing fit yeah. and uh, a community that has felt like family, I'll be back in uh, probably a couple years. Yeah? yeah okay. Definitely. All right, he said it. It's on camera. He yeah, said it. No, it's, I'm already, I've already talked to my manager about like what year, like 2019, like can I do it? Like okay. let's, let's okay. find what that's gonna be now. Uh -huh. so, uh -huh. so we're looking, so we'll see. Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812 or sometimes it's just called the Great Comet. Yeah, or just uh, Comet. What's uh, it like being so uh, close to the audience and having them all around you and? Well, it's, it's great, especially when you, w we've done now, you know, 100, almost 200 shows yeah. now. There is no such thing as autopilot. There's no monotony, right. there's no, oh, this old thing again. Right. Yeah, I mean, you've got a fresh set of eyes that are staring you down and kind of emoting with you and mm -hmm. uh, you know they're unpredictable sometimes they have their arms crossed and they're not giving you much sometimes they're they got tears running down their face and they're mouthing the, the words with you <laughs> um, are they ever drunk or messy or they're uh, they were dr according to Dave Malloy they were drunker downtown okay because it was in the meatpacking district right. so yeah. he was saying that you know that was oftentimes their first stop before clubbing like right. they go they go to Great <laughs> Comet and just kind of get hammered and then go off to whatever right. the hot club was <laughs> you know yeah they're 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 there have been some there's been some tipsiness, but we generally like to invite the tipsiness when it comes to like handing out the shakers and like partying with us with yeah. with rhythm. Yeah, I've been groped a couple times. Oh, nice! But I'm in a padded suit. I don't really feel it. <laughs> uh, honestly, my my butt, everything is padded. So uh, so it's it's uh, sometimes that you know someone will tell me afterwards like, oh, that lady really got a handful. I'm like, really? Because <laughs> it is. I mean, my padded butt is is quite voluptuous. Is it yeah. bubble butt? Is it's, it soft and grabbable so or is it soft, hard? It's soft, but it's, it's firm. Okay, it's uh, firm. Definitely quarter bounceable. One of these days I'll do a little behind the scenes of you just, should do like an, uh, like a, just wearing the You should do a video of yeah. people bouncing quarters off your, oh, yeah. your fake ass. That, that would be for Broadway let's, Cares. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. How's life with the beard? It's been interesting. Do you have uh, the option to just be like, I just want to shave it off and wear a fake one? Sure. I wonder, I, probably. Yeah, I, it's like they just want to make sure I'm, I'm bearded. Um, I trimmed it too short once for a promo thing and they were just like, that's not, that we're not happy. So I'm like, okay, all right, we will continue to grow the forest. I have been delighted to just change up my face. Uh -huh. I've had, I've been doing the same thing for, right. you know, my same whole face. life. Same yeah, face. Yeah, same face. <laughs> so just, just for just, you know, facial boredom right. purposes, just the opportunity to kind of do something so drastic to my face and say, it's for a roll, um, <laughs> is, uh, is a great, is great. It's, uh, it's keeping me warm, you know, it's okay. soft. Right. I have found that it's very divisive when it comes to like dating. Mm, like I'm like sure. people are either like love a beard or they're just like, oh, I've got to wash my hair, but thank you. It could be a thing like. Well, as a single person in New York, like you just, you realize that like there are two types of people when you have a beard. There are those that will give you the time of day with it and those that are just like, just like, oh, you're, you're sweet. <laughs> you know, and just, they just not, they don't want a beard. They just don't, they don't want to date a beard. So it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's been interesting in that regard. But, um, but I'm, I, I dig it. I like it for the character and it's fun to, you know, and we f like fluff it out on stage and we put like makeup streaks in it. Right. It just it looks very, it looks very much like Gus the theater cat when I get out there, you know, so I, I dig <laughs> That's that. That's another good role for you. Uh, that'd be great. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't really have to dance. Yeah. I think Gus gets away with sort of. Does he? Well, I don't know. I think that, I think he probably dances a lot. Gus, everybody but I feel like they could, create a, they, could, they could create like a star bit for you and just come out. Just Old Deuteronomy just, is the only one. Oh, Old yeah. Deuteronomy is like the Pierre of cats. <laughs> he kind of sits on his tire and. <laughs> and sings about the good old days. <laughs> yeah. But July 2nd, you leave the show, I, that I thing comes to. off immediately. 
Um, I, I don't know if I'm going to do the uh, the Danny Burstein uh, <laughs> Right, and he did it I like don't know. immediately. I, I mean, yeah, I know he, we had uh, dinner the other night, and he's just like, yeah, I know. He's like, I just, I just, I was done. He's like, I was done with it. Yeah. I might be done with it, too. Right. Um, at the very least, I'm going to trim it to, to kind of somewhat contemporary human levels. But it's 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 been a kind of a part of me. I don't. I think I will miss it more than Danny did. Uh-huh. I think that it's it's kind of become, I don't know, a little, I've taken... I've done so much now with it. I feel right. like I've lived a whole life. I'm right. on tour with it. I've taken right. photos with it. Yeah. I feel like maybe, maybe I'll just maybe this will be like my new era. It'll be mm, like the bearded. The next ten years will be bearded. Interesting. It'll be like when we look back at people from the '70s and it's like, oh yeah, yeah, Steve <laughs> Martin, nice beard you had going on there, buddy. Uh, yeah, that, this will be this is the bearded time. I feel like we'll keep everybody hanging to find out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> watch this face. All right, we have to take a quick break, but we'll be right back with Josh Groban. back with Josh Groban. Great comet. Big hit on Broadway. It's awesome. Thanks. Doing great. So yeah. Are you partying on Broadway or are you like take it easy and go home and I you know, I will say that like the one thing that's different from what I expected because you know, when I was like when I was not on Broadway yeah. and just like hanging with the Broadway group, yeah. you know, there would be like drunken nights at Marie's Crisis and like we'd yeah. go out and we'd have fun and but like now that I'm on Broadway, yeah. I feel like you, you start to become very in tune with what your body and what your voice needs. Mm-hmm. You start to really listen to your body way more because no matter how much fun you could be having, there is no worse feeling than being on a Broadway stage and not feeling all together. Right. Not feeling like your full instrument is where you want it to right. be or that you have control over your body because it's um, it takes a lot. So, you know, every few weeks I'll decide that like on an early night, like on a Thursday night when we have a seven o'clock show, yeah. I'll just be like, let's do a group, let's do a thing. You right. know, let's right. go out. We have a bowling league. I haven't done that yet, but I'm going to go out bowling maybe tonight. Okay. you got to do it for your head. Right. It really comes down to like the fact that you wind up hermiting yourself so much. You're doing the show. You're just you're going home. Right. I don't get home sometimes till midnight. I'll have right. like whatever dinners in the fridge, and I'll just rest. And I just want to drink tea and just rest and be ready to be Pierre again the next night. Isn't and it hard to crash right away too? Yeah, like, yeah. So I don't get to bed till like two, three in the morning yeah. because, you know, and I don't want to eat dinner before the show. Right. So because you know, even the burping on stage would actually be really good method for Pierre. Um, right. You just want to pretend to it. So. When I get home, I, I have a nice big dinner, and then I'm just I'm up, and I will write, or I'll I'll read, or I'll get into a video game, or whatever it is, and I just it takes me a few What's hours. What's your to go-to settle. video game right now? Uh, I'm playing a game called uh, Horizon Zero Dawn, which is like a <laughs> as I push up my glasses. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, it's kind of a first-person uh, RPG. It's a uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, you play a girl who's a who's uh, kind of an archer, and then she's okay. sniping all these machines, and she's saving the, the, the civilization, basically. So it's, cool. um, yeah, it's, as you can tell, time-consuming. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of upgrades for that bow. So you got to really work hard at that. That'll keep me up till 3 uh, in itself. Yeah, don't you like it's 4 in the morning. Making potions, go you know, <laughs> yeah. haggling with merchants. Uh, you know, so that's, that's my, extent of my social life is playing that game right now. Um, you know, it, it's worth it to have yourself at 100% for each course, audience. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and so, you know, come July 2nd, I think I'm probably going to party more with my cast and right. with the Broadway community right. after I'm out of the show. I'm like, Josh uh, is here again. He wants to go out. <laughs> we, we have a show to do. We have you to guys go home. Bit, you guys want something? <laughs> just, I just show up <laughs> with a flask. <laughs> Keep box five open for me. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go back a little bit. So okay. you, you grew up in LA, right? I did. And... Your parents were not in show business? Uh, no, not professionally. They're both very artistic. Okay. My dad played jazz trumpet through college. Oh, cool. We have old recordings of him. He is an amazing trumpet player, but he came from a really uh, strict family who basically said, like, that's no way to make, make a living. He's a brilliant business guy. So he's been, a, been an executive search headhunter for okay. his whole life. My mom uh, was an art teacher and a junior high art teacher, incredible painter. Um, kind of decided that she wanted to be full-time mom when my brother and I were born. So we were very lucky for that. You know, so they, they both are very artistic, but then both have very real world right. kind of uh, things. And so for, for them to see, and my brother's a director, for, for, for them to see us in the arts, mm-hmm. uh, it's been a combination of support, but also an understanding, not at all show parents. Like you have to work, you have to get an education, you have to do everything that you need to do. So it's been really fun to see things through their eyes right. because they've been they've been so ecstatic about it all. So you got interested in Broadway? Was Broadway the initial dream? Kind of, yeah. We like all know, we've all loved your Tevya. I mean, obviously that's very <laughs> famous, your Tevya. Yeah, James Corden. Um, <laughs> Would you ever do Fiddler? Oh, in a heartbeat. Okay. Yeah, that's that's a that's so that's, a, what that's a down do the road roll. That's 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 what's going to be the next. 
Yeah, yeah maybe. I yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, give me. Uh, maybe maybe the next. Maybe the, give not me the ten next years. Revival, give me ten the years. The revival after the next. Yeah, forty six. I think would be a good age for Tevia. Yeah. No, I we have a great great theatrical uh, community in Los Angeles too, right. and it's only getting better. Uh, but my parents uh, took us out to the music center, and we would see touring companies of Phantom and Cats and Lee. Do you remember like your first? It was Cats. I was okay. nine years old. Okay. And that was when they had like the tunnels, and you know they were crawling all around, and yeah, you know. Okay, so being a kid and seeing Cats already is just like wow. <laughs> but then like the nine-year-old kind of play-by-ear muso in me that uh-huh. was developing, like the kid that liked more complicated stuff and was like glued to Sunday in the Park with George right. and for whatever reason really liked kind of weird odd chords was also really taken with Weber's oddities in the way mm. he composed Cats. Mm-hmm. Like some of that stuff is really yeah. out there melodically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I just kind of, you know, as a kid you watch that and yes it was all a big show and there were cats and it was a lot of fun but musically I remember really thinking to myself that this was really odd and beautiful and I remember like going back to the piano and you know uh, just just playing that <laughs> like what are you doing there? oh cats nothing <laughs> so I, I don't know I kind of I got the bug I would sit there and I would feel something I'd felt like yeah. it wasn't just something I wanted to go home and play and sing the songs like I wanted I saw that just like somebody sees a pilot or they see a fireman or whatever mm-hmm. it is and I said I want to um, I want to tell stories I want to tell stories on stage I want to I want to be a character, and I want to mm-hmm. I want to make other people feel the way that I'm feeling right now because this is really cool. And as somebody who then grew up into a high school situation where I felt like I was a little bit shy or kind of introverted and didn't really make a lot of friends, my grades were kind of suffering. And then all of a sudden, I went to a school with the arts mm-hmm. and with arts education, and all of a sudden, every aspect of that changed. I started to really realize that the arts had to be a part of my life. That theater was something that was the ultimate goal and also really taught me a lot about the importance of arts exposure and arts education right. in young people's lives. So now as, uh, as a grown adult who's now been one of the lucky ones, I think about those kids that didn't get pulled to see Cats at nine mm-hmm. years old, that didn't have a great choir teacher that pulled them out from the back to say, you're gonna do a solo, you've got right. talent. And so my other great passion now besides what I'm doing is, is my foundation, Find Your Light, which is all about uh, arts education and uh, get, get, getting those experiences to young people that wouldn't normally get them. So mm. um, yeah, I owe a great deal to my, to my parents and to those teachers that gave me those first experiences. Sure. And yeah, when you get to meet like Andrew Lloyd Webber or Stephen Sondheim as an adult, like it just, it just it makes your whole world. It's crazy, they all know you now. It's great. You're singing their stuff and yeah. they know who you are and they want you in their shows, it's, it's cool. It's very cool, <laughs> I gotta say. There are very few times when I actually kind of sit back and give myself a high five. I'm, I'm generally extremely self-critical and don't celebrate things for v- very long. But when I get to meet a hero mm-hmm. and kind of feel like I'm in the universe of, of a hero that I've loved my whole life, right. uh, yeah, it does. It just does, does feel really good, yeah. And so you went to Carnegie Mellon with a lot of people we know. I did. A lot of Broadway oh, people, my yeah. Cla- my freshman class was, like, I mean, like I knew who, it was insane some? then. Okay. But even looking back at it now, like I just think to myself, well, Josh Gad yep. was on my dorm floor. Yeah. Uh, Rory O'Malley was two dorms down from me. Leslie Adam Jr. Yeah. Uh, now those three guys actually. Yeah. They called. We, we, Leslie had a Broadway.com blog. Oh yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And they called you on the blog. They and, did. And they they sang your your big hit. They did. I I, I was on vacation yes. in the woods, and uh, you were in the woods. Okay. I was out in the woods. Yeah, <laughs> and. Uh, uh, working on this beard, and they did. They they called and left me. Uh, they sang "You Raised Me Up" into my uh, into my phone. I still have it uh, saved. It's uh, yeah. And Leslie said, uh, my favorite part. He said, "Remember how funny it was when you left and became a millionaire?" <laughs> because that's basically <laughs> no, what that, ha- that was. Gad said that. Oh yeah, definitely. Gad said that. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, because Gad's always giving me crap. He uh, <laughs> uh, lovingly during the final, uh, and he tells the story. But during the final kind of senior graduation thing for the theater students, uh-huh. um, b- since Carnegie Mellon, oftentimes. Uh, invites people in who are not your not nothing cookie cutter about the people that they bring in. Yeah. They, they find like they like nuance, and so because they kind of bring in people that are a little bit different, a lot of times people get jobs very early on in right. Carnegie Mellon, and they're always tempted to leave. I left, uh, and now you left after a few months. I I left after six months. Okay, um, I was offered uh, I was given an offer I couldn't refuse. Um, you know the chance to uh, make a record with David Foster. Right, I, I took a leave of absence. I didn't quit the school. I just said to myself. If this doesn't work out, I'll go back. Right. You're a year behind, not the end of the world. Um, and it worked out. But then at, uh, it, it, uh, at that graduation, you know, they light a candle for every student that's left. <laughs> and <laughs> Josh Gad <laughs> runs, he's on the side of the stage, he runs across the stage, blows out my candle, and yells, who the f- is Josh Groban? <laughs> and runs off the stage. 
And uh, so, so yeah, so um, uh, you know, he's he's uh, he's been the Don Rickles of my life. Life, God, God rest his soul, Don Rickles. Yeah, Josh. You had already gone platinum. Always by then, so it was kind of yeah, like, yeah, whatever. Blow my many candle out. Over. Blow my candle out. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. That's that's fine. That's fine. I, I hope he coughed on the smoke. Now, like we're, we're like on the Beauty and the Beast soundtrack together. So you know, it's right, like, right. It's you know, he's, right. That's crazy. He's an um, he's a wonderful friend, and, and obviously, it's, it's an extraordinary talent. And uh, it's just fun that we just have that. You know, yeah, that background yeah. together. It's awesome. And you guys all ended up on Broadway. It's so cool. It is very yeah. cool. Josh just came to the show the other night. It was just, it was so amazing to see him sitting out there. And uh, everybody's, everybody's doing great things. Awesome. Uh, we'll be right back with more Josh Groban. We're back with Josh Groban. So, yeah, so you hit it big. You hit it big and Josh Guy was left was left back to, to, <laughs> was, to go to class. Was left with his unlit candle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> so do you remember like the first moment where you were like, oh my God, I have fans. Yeah. You have a lot of fans, but I'm sure, like what was the... Well, w- so interesting that like my career kind of started at the dawn of the internet. So right, right. like 1999, 2000, like people were starting to get AOL in the mail. Yeah. And, uh, oh my God, I forgot about the AOL Yeah, disc. yeah, yeah. You get yeah. the disc, you know, and Steve <laughs> Case like invited you to go yeah. online, yes, you know? Yes. And so it was, it was still kind of at that point where there was no social media yet. Right. It was just like, mess- there were some message boards. Right. Um, and so the first time I realized I had fans was when I did this show, Alan McBeal, and I, I acted in it, and then I also sang a song from what was going to be my forthcoming album. Right. And people started going on line and saying, like, hey, we're really f- big fans of this new kid. Like, we should call ourselves something. And so my record label at the time said, hey, there's this thing people are doing. It's message boards. I think we should do it. I'm like, I don't know, as long as it's not too crazy. Like, sure. <laughs> so they started a message board on my website, and there were like these hundred fans on the message board. Talking Man- about you. Many of whom I still see at Stage Door. Wow. And they said, you know, we got to come up with a name for ourselves, you know, and they started tossing around, you know, the, the, the Joshaholics, the, I don't know. And so they came up with Grobanites. Good for them. <laughs> and uh, and so there are now there are now so many Grobanites because of that uh, because of that um, that first thing. But um, yeah, it was really really cool because my kind of music was not the kind of music you would you think would ever be on the radio or on MTV. Right. At the time that I came out, we were in like boy band, Britney Central. I mean, if it was if it didn't have uh, a Max Martin beat, like there was just how can we market this? Right. So to have a fan base at that early uh, time in my career that believed in me before I started selling a lot of records. I mean, they were the only ones buying the record at that point. I went from selling like 200 copies a week to 200,000 wow. in in a matter of two or three weeks because after two months of just kind of going, well, I wonder if it'll hit or people will find my voice if we break even, we'll be okay. You know, I just was kind of thinking, I'm not sure what's going to happen. And then um, a news program, 2020, decided that there was a little bit of a story there. Alan McBeal and I had sung at the Olympics at that point mm-hmm. and the New York Times had done a wonderful piece on me. And so they did it. And then like three weeks later, Oprah was like, we got your letters. He's coming on. Wow. Went, okay. And it was one of the last things that was kind of done the old fashioned way mm. in the music business. Right. So to be able to start right at a dawn of a new era in the business was, has been a fascinating uh, ride right. for sure. Well, I have to say these people and everyone ma- made you the Broadway.com star of the year. For yeah. 2016. Oh, man. So that was congratulations. So, that was so sweet. I, I, I really was... Um, was so blown away by that and so touched by that. So thank you to everybody who voted. Thank you, everyone. And to Squigs for uh, a really cool, yeah, really Squigs cool drawing. Is the best. He is the best. There's a lot of stuff about you online because oh. of the fans. You know, there's like fan sites. There's sure. fan fiction. Yeah. Uh, oh. Are you ready? The fan fiction. I, I had one drunken night where I went down that rabbit hole <laughs> and uh, went to therapy the next day. We were going to go down that rabbit hole today. Then I thought, suge- you know what? He, that suge- might he be suggested that I just I try to to block it to block <laughs> it. That's what therapists want you to do, right? They want you to sweep stuff under the rug. Yeah. That's what he told me to do. Yeah. But there are a lot of facts, and I just want you to say whether these things are true or false. It'll be really Fact easy. Fact or crap. That Can old game. What'd you call it? Well, there's a board game called Fact or Crap. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so I was going to call it a uh, fangirl fact check. Uh, I like but it. Whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever. Maybe there may be some fanboys, too. I don't know. Let's do it. Josh's favorite cheese is Baby Bell. Oh, yes. That's actually okay. true. Right. Yeah, I like those little wax, you know, you make a little Pac Man. Yeah, those little, those little cheeses. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's <laughs> the little Pac Man cheeses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Josh drives a Porsche 911 Carrera. Oh, that is so, that is so old me. 
You did have one. I did. I okay. did have a Porsche. Yeah. Uh, when I when I first started like uh, making a little bit of moolah, um, I was just like, oh yeah, I got one of your first big splurge get, yeah, items. I got a good Porsche. I need a Porsche. Uh, I get a Porsche. <laughs> um, I I um, I had a great good time with that Porsche. Got a lot of speeding tickets. Uh, now I'm all about the subway. Okay, subway. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I, a, find that, say I, I get places. I get places. I do not. I no longer have the Porsche. No I get longer. places way faster on the subway than I ever did in a Porsche. Okay. Uh, Josh's accordion, which he named Olga. Yeah. That's true, right? Yeah. Is named after his manicurist. <laughs> I could use one, but no, not true. <laughs> not, not, not true. true. Okay. No. Josh dressed as a bunny for Halloween when he was four. Yeah, that's true. True. Yeah, but who, who didn't? True. Okay. Who didn't? Yeah. <laughs> and it wasn't by choice, by the way. My parents. I was a lion the year before. I was a bunny. And then, by age five, I got to choose my own costume, okay. and so I was Houdini. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. Maybe you could be in the Houdini musical. I don't know. Oh, is, are, they, are they still working yeah, on that? I thought like Hugh Jackman Isn't was Hugh Jackman doing, doing, doing that? Yeah, you can he do it. He loves magic, that guy. It's him yeah. or Neil Patrick Harris. They take yeah, yeah. all the magic roles. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's no magic roles left. <laughs> no. Josh recorded you raised me up in his underwear. No, not true. Not true. Not true. Not true. Not true, uh, people. Are we wearing pants? Uh, I'm pretty sure I wore, I've worn pants. For uh, <laughs> the majority of my recordings. <laughs> the yeah. majority, okay. Yeah. We'll, yeah. Leave it, but we'll leave it. Uh, Pajamas counts as pants, right? <laughs> Josh went solo to the prom. Yeah. I did. You did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, I don't mean to bring up something. No, the <laughs> therapist swept under. It's okay. <laughs> sweep that, sweep that under. I've done all right. <laughs> it's okay, we don't talk about it. Okay. Uh, Josh's dream is to have Beyonce sing his tweets. I, I've never said that, but now, now it is. Now it is. <laughs> now it's true. This is a dream think tank is what this is. Even the things yeah, that aren't exactly, true will then be exactly. manifest Just themselves have, yeah. as true. Yeah, Josh, I'm, I'm sure that will happen. Josh warms up backstage every night to the Legally Blonde original Broadway cast recording. <laughs> Again, uh, I, now, you know that's, now. now that's going to be tonight. a thing. That he absolutely will, will be my new thing tonight. <laughs> Josh had to miss the Grammys to work the curtain at his school play. Oh. Is that true? That's Yeah. Yeah, that, that is true. So you, you literally had okay, to like raise so, the curtain. <laughs> so um, yeah, I was teching. Uh, so I, I was plucked out of class during my junior year in high school uh -huh. to sing with Celine Dion at a Grammy yes, rehearsal. Yes, that was a big deal. So it was a big deal. David Foster had kind of heard me sing a few weeks prior. He said, "Hey kid, somebody's pulled out." Hey kid. Hey kid. Let's do this. Let's come to the stage door and uh, <laughs> wave your little pass at the security man, and he'll let you right in. Now stand on the X and shut up. Yeah, it was very much like a Star is Born kind of moment. I'm singing with Celine. Yeah. I mean, everybody's just kind of going, oh my God, like, you know, buy a suit in case Andrea Bocelli doesn't show up. You're going to go on. Yeah. Thankfully, Andrea did show up. But they're like, that was great. We loved it. Please come and join us for, oh, us, okay, for our right. show tonight. Please come to the Grammys tonight. And you tonight. said. And I, I had to work curtains for a show. At, I was going to LA County High School for the Arts, which is an amazing uh, public arts high school in Los Angeles. You were on curtains? That was your I was job? On, yeah, I was on tech duty for that one. Um, I forgot. I forgot what it was. Okay. Uh, but um, but it was obviously very important. Yeah, uh, that's very and, important. Uh, yeah, no, that's worth. I mean, if the curtain point. doesn't open, then the show is basically not right. Happening. Yeah. yeah, you've got curtain. Your curtains are set at the Grammys. You don't. You don't need me. <laughs> Josh's beard takes three groomers who come to his dressing room every Wednesday. <laughs> not true. I think. <laughs> no, but man, what a story. Josh is double jointed. I am double jointed. Yeah. Like you show me. Is it like? Like my my fingers like can bend like way oh. way far back. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I love this one. This is how they wrote it on the okay. site. Josh can be moody and impatient. Say it ain't so, Josh. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Everybody has their moments, It's that right? old joke. Uh, <laughs> my therapist says I have a preoccupation with vengeance. We'll see about that. <laughs> <laughs> moody? Moody? Yeah, probably moody. But I never take it out on anybody. I only ever just take it out on myself. Right. Okay. Just, just, right. Just, you know, just just like ordinary. We're gonna say hermit it ain't depression. So. So Josh said it ain't so. It, Lol. It ain't so. Lol. <laughs> Josh's style icon is Mr. Rogers. You don't I think mean, Mr. Rogers? Sadly, that's probably. probably you really? True. Is, is that kind of? I mean, I didn't think of it until now, but I, I own a lot of uh, cardigans. You're learning a lot about yourself. I, I am learning okay. a lot. My fans know more about me than I do. Yeah. I love this one too. This is how they wrote it. Josh doesn't do anything special to his hair. Just towel dries it and goes. I like that. Yeah, that's is that true. true. Yeah. Just and go. <laughs> that's it. That's it. <laughs> no let, nature, let nature take its course. The rain has, has helped yeah. the curl today. The polar opposite yeah, of the day. Yeah, with yeah, my straight product. off the pillow. Okay, Josh and Adina Menzel have an eight year online chess tournament they've been playing with each other. <sighs> She's so good. We're just, we're, we're just. <laughs> Check, checkmate, checkmate, checkmate. Move something, checkmate, checkmate. It's been going on. This is this is better than um, than uh, the blue uh, the, the IBM computer versus uh, Kasparov. Oh wow! This is this is a this before been, you even did chess together. We, it'll be oh before we, before we were like you know we really should do the musical sometime. 
You know, she's like, stop trying to distract me. Josh's favorite vegetable is corn. I'm a corn fan, so. I love, I do love corn, yeah. but I love all vegetables. All I, vegetables. My dream, oh, my dream is to have a garden. Do you ever see oh. Oprah's Instagram page? And it's like harvest day. Yeah. And she'll like <laughs> bring out day. a basket where just all of her fresh vegetables have been picked. That, that's, that's my real? dream. You think that's real? I want, oh, it's absolutely real. That's real. Okay. Oh, it's absolutely real. <laughs> I want to have an Oprah garden. Well, this kind of relates to the final one. Josh would like to own a pig. Oh, that's very that's, true. That's true? Absolutely true. Why don't I just do it? I stopped eating pork because I learned that they're like emotionally intelligent like dogs are. And I love dogs so much. Um, Your dog's name is Sweeney. <laughs> yeah, correct. It's true. And yeah, so I, I would like, not. I mean, if, if it winds up growing up to be massive, I'll still love it just the same. But I would like a little, a little, a little, a little piglet for my dog to play with. And, and they wag their tails and they're... They get along, dogs and pigs? Oh, they get along great oh. because they're very similar actually emotionally and, into, and, um, and just they play. I, I have, I'm following all the pig, pigs as pets like Instagram pages where people just dress up their pigs and, and let them, you know, uh, go hug wild. I've got a name for your pig. What is that? Love it. Love it. Do you love, love it? it? I love it. <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love well, it because Josh, it could be love it or love it. Yeah, exactly. Like Mrs. Love Double it. meanings. Josh Groven, you are a delight. You're a delight. Thank Thanks. you so much Th- for coming thank by. Thank you for having me on your uh, wonderful show. I thank love you your so show much. and I'm honored to be on it and part of this amazing community. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, everyone, you need to see Natasha Pierre in the Great Comet of 1812, ideally before July 2nd to see this guy. But even beyond, even beyond it's beyond. a great show. Oak is coming in after me. He's going to be amazing. Yes, um, yes, yes. There are some uh, performances in May where, where uh, Dave Malloy is going to be stepping right, in for I 10 performances. That only. Cool. So uh, truly, any any performance of Natasha Pierre and the Great Comet of 1812, I hope you have an amazing time. It's at the Imperial Theater, and you honestly won't forget it. I mean, it's such a stunning, stunning show. Yeah. Yep. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.